Good morning. Welcome as we gather together in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome family and friends and all who join us by Facebook. We are delighted to have you worshiping with us today. Just a few brief announcements. Um, the first is the sign up for All Saints Names to be remembered on November 6th, All Saints Sunday, will, is found in the North Wing. So if you would like to have uh, a loved one or friend remembered and their name called out on All Saints Sunday, please sign that name uh, on the sheet in the North Wing. Let's see. Um, immediately following the sermon today, we will have the rededication and blessing of the windows and the quilts. So that will be incorporated into the service. There is an insert in your bulletin with the, the words and some lovely pictures. Uh, so please make sure you have that available at the appropriate time. Again, that is immediately following um, the sermon today. You also have in your uh, an insert uh, the hymn of the day which is um, ask the complicated questions, uh, but not during the sermon. Uh, that's going to be right after the dedication of the uh, windows and quilts. Are there any other announcements that need to be made at this time? If not, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with a silent prayer and a prelude.
May we rise for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and loves us beyond our days. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. 
for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. O Lord God, tireless guardian of your people, you are always ready to hear our cries. Teach us to rely day and night on your care. Inspire us to seek your undying justice for all this suffering world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, May be seated. The first reading is from Genesis. The same night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob, 
So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed through Penuel, limping because of his hip. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 2 Timothy. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message, be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable, convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, But having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 18th chapter. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. And in that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? 
Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Are there children to come forward for children's time? All right. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. We have. Yes, no, I see. I don't. We're going to go ahead and get started. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I, oh, we've, we've got one coming down. Come on down. Come on. Come on. Woo. Come on up. How are you this morning? Come on, have a seat. No, oh, you have a Bible. You sure do. Can you have a seat? Come on. You want to take a look up there? We'll do that. I love being upstage by kids. Oh, we are going to be sharing. We're generous. Well, thank you. I've got a question for you. Have you ever talked to your mom? No? All right, well, this is getting nowhere. I, I'll tell you something. I talk all the time to my wife. And when we talk, I tell her how I feel about things. And she tells me how she feels about things. And that's a, that's, a good, that's a good thing, right? When you talk to your grandma, right? Talk to her sometimes. Yeah? Well, when we talk about things, when we do it with people here on earth, we call it conversation. We call it talking. But when we talk to God, we call it prayer. Can you say prayer? Prayer. So prayer is just talking with God, and God wants us to talk with him. As a matter of fact, God says, I want you to talk with me all the time. Just like you talk with your mom and your, your grandma, and we talk together, God wants us to pray. And there's a lot of different ways to pray. Sometimes we pray with our hands folded. Have you ever? Yeah, but you... That's right. And sometimes we close our eyes. But sometimes we open our hands like this. And we go, oh, yay, God. Can you say yay, God? Yay, God. That's a prayer. And sometimes people kneel. They kneel on their knees. They get down and they say, oh, dear God, please, be, please help me. Please be with my family. So there are a lot of different ways that we can pray. We can pray with our eyes open. We can pray with our eyes closed. We can pray with our hands together. We can pray with our hands up. We can pray with our hands open. Mm -hmm. The words of the Bible, God's word. So God wants us to talk to him and share what's in, what's in our hearts. Are you happy? Yeah. Tell God you're happy. Say, I'm happy. Can you say, I'm happy? I'm happy. I'm happy. Are you happy? Can you say, I'm happy? <laughs> That's all part of the way we talk to God. Yeah. Yeah, he's very happy. <laughs> very, very happy. All right. Can you join me over here? Nope. I want that mic. Can you, can you come over here for a minute? All right, right here. 
we can set this right up there. And in here is a little bit of water. Can you stick your finger in there? And you feel it? Is it cold? Is it a little bit of cold? We're going to say a prayer to God right now. We're going to just let our hands be in that water. Say, dear Jesus, we love you. Thank you for loving us. Help us to talk to you always. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Thank you for coming up, and we will see you next time. And don't forget your Bible. And there's your cards. Thank you. Bye. I miss the late and great Mr. Jake Wyckoff. When I arrived at Manual over 11 years ago, Jake was the unofficial church historian and the keeper of all things Emmanuel. He could tell you anything you needed or wanted to know about the church or the town of Lincolnton. He was a wealth of knowledge and a living encyclopedia. And whenever I would visit him, he would pull out one of his many scrapbooks and show me page after page of pictures of Emmanuel throughout the years and recount his narrative of memories. And one of his favorite was the photograph of the men's Sunday school class, circa 1950-ish, post-World War II, with some 100 men, 100 men standing in front of the chapel. And that was just a Sunday school class, the men's Sunday school class. We have less than 100 people in worship this morning. Think about just one men's Sunday school class being together. Well, his dream was always to get back to those good old days. But did you know that Emmanuel Lutheran Church is as old as Lincolnton itself? The town of Lincolnton was founded in 1785 and became the capital of Lincoln County, which comprised the territory of what is now Lincoln, Catawba, Gaston, and Cleveland counties. 1,800 square miles. That same year, Emmanuel Lutheran Church was established 237 years ago. It's hard for me to imagine those rugged folks, men, women, and children, making their way down from Pennsylvania and other areas north through the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia and settling in this region. Yet as many as were drawn by their hopes and dreams for a new and better life, those folks also brought with them their faith. And with prayer and persistence, the very first house of worship was built, known as the Dutch Meeting House, just across the street where the cemetery is. You know, it was a very small structure. And it was used by various faith traditions, not just Lutheran, but Reformed and Presbyterian. And soon... A second story was added, as well as a gallery. Weatherboard siding was put up, and it became known as the Old White Church, for it was painted white. Almost all of the downtown Lincolnton churches originated out of the Old White Church. So why am I giving you this fascinating history lesson when I'm supposed to be preaching? 
Because the truth of the matter is that the good old days haven't always been the good old days. Emmanuel's history in Lincolnton is really a challenging story of faith that I would guess many of us don't know. For what we see before us, these, this beautiful hundred-year-old building, these stunning refurbished stained glass windows were not how we began in this community. They are the evidence of a persistent faith, of an ongoing and sometimes unrelenting conversation with God in prayer. So let me explain a little bit. As the Presbyterians and other denominations left the old white church to start their own faith traditions throughout the community, the Lutherans stayed. And twice, once in 1803 and again in 1820, the meeting of the North Carolina Synod was held in the old white church. But there was an unraveling in the fabric of Lutheranism in North Carolina at that time, which led to the formation of the Tennessee Synod and three of our former pastors, Paul and his sons, Philip and David Henkel, were instrumental in forming the Tennessee Synod, creating a schism that took nearly a hundred years to heal. These were difficult days in the life of a young Emmanuel congregation. But with a faithful God and the persistence of prayer, Emmanuel Lutheran was able to hang on, but just barely. By 1830, and continuing for 60 years, 1830, and for 60 years, Emmanuel Lutheran Church relied on financial assistance from the church at large just to meet its expenses. There was no pastoral leadership for 60 years, and interest in the church was waning. It wasn't until 1890 when neighboring pastors joined forces to revive this congregation and things began to look hopeful again. Worship services were again being held at the appointed times in the old white church. But just three short years later, on December 23rd, as families were getting ready for Christmas, Disaster struck as the old white church went up in flames and burned to the ground. Worship services were then held at the, the Methodist church while plans were being made for a new building. The Reverend John Franklin Moser was called as pastor and reorganized this congregation with just 14 members. Persistent prayer and the faithfulness of God. By 1910, Emmanuel was in their new church building across the street, but the congregation was growing so rapidly that within seven years, the building could no longer accommodate the burgeoning members and the burgeoning ministry the property on which we currently stand was purchased and plans were made for this facility. And on October 20th, 1920, this building with these magnificent windows was dedicated and completely free of debt. The total cost of the structure in 1920 was 
thousand dollars. And not only that, but just two weeks before the dedication of this building, the Tennessee Synod met at Emanuel Lutheran Church and decided to reunite with the North Carolina Synod, ending a hundred years of dissidence. Once again, persistent prayer and a faithful God. We're here today ex still experiencing great difficulties, worldwide pandemic, political un upheaval, social unrest, violence in our nation, devastating storms, and war. But now is not the time to be silent, to bury our heads in the sand, or to just throw up our hands. No, this is the time to get on our knees. This is the time to open God's word. This is the time to listen to the voice of the one who is calling Emmanuel into a new future. This is the time to look to the history of the past and see how God has been present in those difficult days. This is the time to give God glory for where we've been and ask God to lead Emmanuel into the future. This is the time to offer ourselves up for the sake of what God is doing in this congregation and in this community. This is the time to step up not to step back. This is the time. In today's gospel, Jesus tells a parable about the need to pray constantly and to not lose heart. If the judge in this story, who cares nothing about God and really dislikes this woman, owes the woman nothing, finally comes around because she is a thorn in his side or probably backside. And she won't stop nagging him until justice has been done. How much more would a good and loving God listen to the cries of his children and respond graciously? Jesus is telling his disciples and he is telling us, be persistent in prayer, listening and discerning God's spirit at work. St. Paul reiterates it in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, pray without ceasing, for God is faithful to answer. Sisters and brothers, prayer works, but not always the way we think or the way we might expect. Why do we want, expect, or even demand that we get simple answers to complex questions? Why do we shoot prayers to God? And then sit back and just wait. Why do we pray that God alleviates hunger but then not offer from our abundance for the sake of the hungry? Why do we pray for justice but not work against injustice? Through prayer. God invites us to participate in the very thing that we are praying for. If you think about it, prayer really isn't about changing God. Prayer changes us. Praying is keeping our lifeline to God open and offering us hope. In just a few minutes, we will rededicate 
and give thanks to God for these beautiful stained glass windows. Even after a hundred years, they continually remind us of the light of Christ shining in a darkened world. They shine the glory of God in this place. We want them to be a reminder, not just for us, but for the generations to come of the faithfulness of God in this place. We are passing on the faith to our children and our children's children. Pray that God will work in and through this congregation to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And then, after you pray, invite your friends, your neighbors, and yes, even strangers to come and see the glory of God in this place. But we're also going to bless these quilts because each and every one of them was made in love, truly for the sake of someone else. These were made to be a blessing to someone who needs to know that they are remembered and cared for in a real and tangible way. They will warm hearts as well as bodies. They will cover cold floors, create walls, offer shelter. They will be a constant reminder of the love of God through your hands. These quilts are a living testimony to praying beyond our words. This truly is God's work and our hands. Yes, be persistent in prayer for God is faithful. I can't wait to see what the future holds and where God is leading Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Amen. At this time, we will dedicate the stained glass windows and the quilts. <coughs> Before we do that, if you have ever donated material, sewn, or have in any way been involved in the quilting ministry here or at another congregation, please stand up. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart and from sisters and brothers across the world and even in our own community who have benefited from the ministry of your hands and your hearts. For you have received nothing but a sense of fulfillment and gratitude for the ministry that you have carried out. So thanks be to God for you and for what you do and have done on behalf of the ministry of quilting. Thank you very much. And let me say that they continue to quilt every Tuesday morning and there's never enough people um, so if any of you are interested in the fellowship hall, they would love to have you. As I've mentioned, these stained glass windows are a hundred years old. One hundred years old. I am amazed and always when I come into the sanctuary of the beauty of this place. I remember the first time I came in here, I was reminded of Moses and the burning bush, and all I wanted to do was say, this is holy ground, and take off my shoes. 
but since I was with the call committee, I didn't think it would probably be appropriate. <laughs> but think of all the people who have sat where you are sitting, who have continued to fight the good fight of faith, in these last 100 years, the faithful, the loving, family members, friends, and strangers who have continued to share the good news of Jesus Christ in this place and beyond. That's the legacy that we want to leave for our children and our children's children and beyond that the good news of Jesus Christ continue in this place. And so we dedicate. Brothers and sisters in Christ, today we seek God's blessings as we gather with thankfulness to dedicate these stained glass windows and these quilts. From Ephesians 6.18, we read, Pray in the Spirit on all occasions with kindness, with the kind of prayers and requests. And with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all of the Lord's people. And again from Jeremiah 29.12, Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. All your works praise you, O Lord. And your faithful servants bless you. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, for you made the whole earth for your glory. All creation praises you. We lift our voices to join the songs of heaven and earth, of things seen and unseen. You stretched out the heavens like a curtain. You divided the day from night. You appointed times and seasons for work and rest, for tearing down and building up. You blessed your people through all generations and guided them in life and death. Abraham and Sarah, Moses and Miriam, Isaiah and all the prophets, Mary, the mother of our Lord, Peter, James, John, and all the apostles, and all the saints and witnesses in your church of ages past, in whom your spirit spoke and moved. Be with us now and bless us as we dedicate these stained glass windows and quilts to your glory and praise. Grant us faith to know your gracious purpose in all things. Give us joy in them and lead us to the building up of your kingdom through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you all.
we join together professing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. For all the baptized, that they become skilled in compassion and grace and equipped to share the good news with all, grant your followers persistence in proclamation and prayer. God of grace. Hear our prayer. For air and sky, clouds and sun, that they provide rain to parched land and relief to flooded ground, renew and restore our polluted atmosphere and empower us to be worthy stewards of creation. God of grace. Hear our prayer. For judges, juries, and all who work in the judicial system, that they desire wisdom, seek truth, rule with fairness, and have the courage to do what is right. Eliminate oppression and injustice in our criminal justice system. God of grace. Hear our prayer. For all who are lonely, especially those who have newly arrived in an unfamiliar city or country, political prisoners without recourse to justice, hospital patients without visitors, and any who are ill or grief-stricken. God of grace. Hear our prayer. For those in our congregation and community engaged in advocacy work, that with the persistence of the widow, they lift their voices in seeking justice on behalf of others. God of grace. Hear our prayer. For those who have taught us faith and now rest in your heavenly peace, that we remember and give thanks for these saints who shared the gospel through word and deed. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Gather together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit Gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Thank you. Let us share God's peace with one another.
us pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all whom you share with this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
May you rise as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may God who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace, and may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Christ beside you.